I've got my batter board set up and a string line ran. You want to see that video? You can find it somewhere on screen in the description or a pinned comment. Now I can mark out for my footers. Something to be aware of here when I say CMU, I'm talking about a concrete masonry unit or a cinder block for those not in the trade. This string line represents the outside of my framed wall, which will also be the outside of my foundation piers. It does not represent the outside of my footers. For that, I'm going to mark four inches outside those string lines. How did I figure that, you ask? That is a very good question. So my piers are going to consist of a poured footer with rebar and one CMU. The CMU is eight by eight by 16 inches. My footer needs to be twice as wide and eight inches longer than my CMU. Also, it cannot be thicker than the width. That is information that you can find by simply checking your local codes, and it may be different for you. One other piece of information that I need is how far down the bottom of my footer needs to be. That happens to be 12 inches below the frost line. I don't have a frost line, so that math is easy to do. All that info allows me to figure the placement, size, and depth of my footers. An eight inch wide CMU means I need a 16 inch wide footer. Split that difference so my CMU would be centered on that footer, and that means I need to mark four inches outside my string line. Same thing for my length. Hope you followed that. So my footers just happen to be 16 by 24 inches. I have chosen a four foot spacing between piers, which means five footers per load bearing wall. That is overkill, not gonna lie. I could have done fine with four footers per load bearing wall, and probably by code, could have gotten away with just three. The depth, I need that to be 12 inches below the frost line. And as I said earlier, we don't have a frost line here. So I just need to go 12 inches. Now this hard pan, once it's been compacted, it is not the easiest thing in the world to dig through. Alright, so yesterday I was able to get the concrete blocks moved over here from behind the wood chip pile and I was able to get the rebar cut. So I needed, well I don't even know, uh, two, 20 18 inch lengths of rebar and then 28 inch lengths of rebar. And that took a couple of hours to do. I did that with a sawzall and a metal cutting blade. And so I guess it was around 3.30, 4 o'clock yesterday when I mixed up the first batch of concrete. And I was able to get the uh, front corner and the back corner footer. And then I didn't really feel like mixing up any more concrete. And it was later in the day. It was probably about 5.30 at that point. And it's, it's very crucial to get these corner blocks set up appropriately. And that's why I took a little extra time to make sure that those were right. So today I've got eight footers left to pour and we're going to see if we can't get through this. Also to note, if you have a rectangular shaped footer, you only run the rebar in one direction and that is with the length. If you have a square footer, you run that rebar in both directions. So if my footers were 24 by 24, I would have had to put rebar in both directions. But with it being 16 by 24, I only have to go one direction. My CMU is seven and a half inches in height. I know, 
I said eight inches earlier, but that's nominal sizing. The actual sizing is seven and a half inches. That's just a little tidbit that you may not know if you've never done this before. So my string line represents the top of where I want my CMU to be. That means the top of my footer will be about seven inches below the string line. And I'm not quite there yet. Okay, so once I hit the seven inch mark, it's time for me to place my CMU. That half inch difference allows me to sink this down into the wet footer and level things out. And that is what I'm looking for right there. A couple pieces of vertical rebar to further tie things together. And doing all this in one shot makes everything one solid piece. Sometimes you'll see people pour the footers and then wait for it to dry. Lay a bed of mortar, put the CMU down, then put the concrete in, all that jazz. I just do this all at the same time. I think it provides a stronger bond between the footer and the pier. Finally, some anchor bolts. There is code on the placement of the anchor bolts. You don't want these sticking up too high. You also don't want them too low either. Basically, you want them sticking up the thickness of your sill plates uh, and termite shields if you're using those plus a half of an inch. I'm going to cover these up and wait 72 hours before setting my sill plates. That's going to be in the next video. And we are well on our way to a brand new workshop. Hey, don't forget to check me out on Facebook and visit me at simplyeasydiy.com. Until then.